also now than your book, but okay. So you do have it there. It's number four. So it says the iron rod is longer. Um, the one iron rod is longer than the other. Both are the same temperature. The temperatures are increased by the same amount. What will be true for the changes in length? Please be careful. And if you watch the videos, please, I emphasized the equations. Please don't use those equations in your book. You are getting these on your information sheet. So don't go and use equations that we don't give you. You will see by the end of it, there are thousands of equations, especially in modern physics. If you're going to try and remember all the equations, you're going to make your life a nightmare. It's going to be the reason why, why further, further physics is hard and we don't want that. So stick to these equations. So the, the change in the temperature is what they spoke about. And if, oh, let me just go back there. And if we, I'm just going <laughs> to make you seasick. Um, I'm just going to bring it with us quickly. <clears throat> so if we look at the equation and they say change in length, then you can already see what it depends on. So if the two have, so the two have different lengths and you can see same material. So that means alpha will be the same for them. Delta T is the same for them. But then you can see there already that the original length is not the same. So they're saying the changes will be the same. The change will be greater for the longer rod, greater for the shorter rod or they will not change lengths at all. So what did the guys that you guys that did do it, you can actually, this is good. You don't have to, um, if let's see who type, you can type, then we can see who quickly typed the fastest answer. Fast fingers. When I do science clinic, I let them, let them um, type because they never want to speak to me. <laughs> yes, I also, I definitely think Kenan is right. So it is definitely B. So the longer rod, because it dep depends on the change in um, the temp, oh, change in the original length. So the, I'm sorry, let me just rephrase that. The change in length depends on all these things. So the type of material, the original length, and the change in temperature, because those two stay the same it's still going to be different. So the answer yes is definitely B. Okay, then the next one um, was again an explanation question. So I tried to put some um, explanations in here, but who can, you should be able to figure this out without actually giving me a hectic scientific. Who wants to try in plain, simple English? What's gonna happen to that, um, to that one, number five? Why? It's not only for a frying pan. Um, why shouldn't I pour hot water into a glass beaker or hot water? Oh, yeah, it's the same thing. Cold water into a frying pan. That's the opposite. So cold water onto a frying pan is a diagram. Yeah. But it's the same reason why we shouldn't put hot water in a glass, in a cold glass or put a cold container into a very hot oven. Why should we not do that? Who wants to try? <clears throat> Sorry, guys, my throat is still like this. Come, please go. Okay, so yes, the expansion and the contraction will be very fast. Okay, so you're both right, but they cooling and so why would a fast cooling break it? So you're both right that it's happening fast, but why would that cause the thing to break? If I'm cooling down fast, I'm not breaking. <laughs> okay, that's not a very good example. I might break. Um, why does a fast cooling actually break something? So if you said that, if this was a question in the exam and you said that, you probably would only get one out of three. Okay, so the shape could change. But there's still one important thing that you guys are leaving out. So you're right. All of this is right. There's just one important point that you're not saying. You're allowed, I shouldn't have said type, now you just want to type. You can still speak as well. Okay, so I'm going to draw. So if this is my pan, okay, actually I'm going to use the diagram that's here. You can use the, the diagram that's here as a guideline. If this is the pan, remember it's made of a metal and all these metal particles are arranged in a certain, in a certain way. So you've got your protons, um, not protons, your positive kernels with your C of ED localized electrons, but they form grains 
I don't know if you remember from grade 10, you did this a little bit. They form metallic grains. So what happens is you're absolutely right. Now, the whole pan is hot because it just came off the plate. But when you're adding the hot water, ach, the cold water, you're only adding the cold water to the, uh, the top part of the pan. So this top part of the pan is going to contract rapidly, like you guys said. So because it's contracting rapidly, and these particles are just still chilling over here, there's going to be a crack between this layer that's contracting fast and this layer that is not contracting. And therefore, it's going to crack. And it's the same thing that happens with glass. And you, this is a type of a thermal image that I threw in here that you can see. So this is the core material. And then as the out, outside starts warming up, it cracks. And then the inside is not moving. So it's not... Um, it's not uh, it's not moving so that between these layers that's where the crack comes in does that make sense so you guys are right but you're gonna have to add the part that it is not happening for the whole material so yeah you are using all these you're using good words guys but still just remember that you need to explain it simply for us to give you marks I'm sorry this cat really wants to be a part of your lesson it's Miss Miss Peace, Miss Pretorius's cat that wants to be in your lesson. <laughs> now she's walking on the. Oh, sorry, I don't think you guys can see me now anymore. I don't know what she did. Can you see the screen still? Can you? Um, my screen went like Bl black. Black, yeah. No, it's not just you. My on my side, it also went black. Oh, it's actually gone, gone. Mm -hmm. Can you still see it? No, no, I need you to stop it. sharing your screen, ma'am. Yeah, now I did. Okay, now I'm sharing it. Now you should see everything again. Sorry, I kicked her off. She was walking on my keyboard. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's the first question. <clears throat> uh the second question then the next one i gave you was actually number eight and this is the one these are the ones that you're going to now get a little bit more marks for so they're asking you i know i just took photos of these so i know it's horrible but you do have do you have this number eight in your books just please check for me yes we do ma okay so they say how much taller in millimeters is the eiffel tower at the end of the day when the temperature has increased by um 15 degrees celsius they tell you in the morning this is the height um and they want to know they tell you that it's made entirely of steel so the equation that we're going to use please remember even in ap it's still important that you write down your equation so you're still going to say delta l is going to be now the equation that we want to use is not the one in your equation although it says how much taller um, so you're not going to work out the new height. You're going to work out the difference in height. So you're going to say alpha, which is the that coefficient of expansion that we're looking for, change in the temperature. And then it becomes literally plug and play. What value did you use for um, for alpha for the coefficient of expansion? Did you use 1.18 times 10 to the minus 5? Now everyone is dead again. Ma'am, you know how I said I got this one wrong? It's because I used the wrong formula. I used the one for one um, for the three-dimensional objects. Oh. So I thought, like the Eiffel Tower or three dimensions. No, I get you. But please, re so I don't, I don't blame you for doing that with that. But please remember that even the this one here, Remember, this also has three dimensions because it also is length and breadth and height. But when they say length, they literally only want to know in one dimension. So please read the questions. I'm actually glad you made that mistake. So please read your questions nicely. Normally, when it's liquids, they're going to do the volume one. So if they say taller, it's still the height, which would be the length. It's only in one dimension. So just be careful for that. Okay, I know I understand why. Okay, so, oh, what did I leave out of the equation here? The original length, guys. 
Remember, the original length is super important. Now, what am I going to use? Am I going to use meters or am I going to use millimeters? Would it make sense here to now go and use millimeters? You can, I guess. If you convert it now into millimeters already, then your answer is going to be in millimeters immediately. So you can. So you can say 3, 2, 1, and then just don't get your powers of 10 wrong. So it's going to be 3, 2, 1 times 10 to the 3, not minus 3. So that's going to be your original length they gave us there, times by the change in temperature. And they told us that as well, increase by 15 degrees Celsius. Can I use 15 degrees? I'm going to start picking on you guys if you don't answer. Can I use the, the degree Celsius there? I'm just going to go down the line. What do you think, Keenan? Yes. You're, you're right. Why is he right, Anele? You got the harder question. <laughs> Mom, I honestly don't know. That's don't fine. Know. That's fine. Um, who can help her? Let's go, Ethan. That's right, because you, you said he's correct, so that has to be right. <laughs> but why? Okay, fine. He's right, because the change normally, if this was a, a different cal type of calculation, if, if in most temperature calculations, we are never allowed to work with degrees Celsius because it doesn't give us a linear relationship. Remember that day one. We want a linear relationship. And if we are, want something with a linear relationship, we have to start from the origin. And the only temperature scale that does that, that it starts at zero, is the Kelvin temperature scale. So normally, we would convert our temperatures into Kelvin. But for this one, because it's a change in temperature, a difference here of 15 Kelvin would be exactly the same as a difference in degrees. Because one size, the size of one Kelvin, is the same as the size, the calibration that they use, is the same as the size of one degree Celsius. So that when you're working with a change in temperature, you don't have to worry about converting into Kelvin. It's just extra calculations. So we could have just used the 15 here. You didn't have to worry about that. And then when you calculate this, I've already changed into millimeters. So that means my answer, you guys can quickly do it on the calculator at least. Come, let's see what you get. Let's see if you can use your calculators and see if you get this. Because you know I always make mistakes on my calculator. Let's see if you guys can get it. <clears throat> Keenan, did you want to say? I got five comma six eight did millimeters. I? You might be right. Oh. I I got fifty six point eight. Yeah, fifty six point eight. Is that what you got, Megan? Yeah, I got fifty six point eight. Okay, so there's yeah. somewhere there's a power of ten error there, Keenan. Just check. So it's yeah, I, I know I went wrong. I converted to centimeters, I think. Uh, okay. So if you don't have to convert, don't convert. But if you, so you could have used meters. If you used meters and you didn't have this three year in the beginning, it doesn't matter. All that it means is that you would have ended up with an answer in meters of, uh, what would it be, 0 0.05 um, six, eight meters. So you would end up with that. And then you can convert into millimeters. But the question told us that they want. No, they actually did. Yeah, they did say. The question did say in, in millimeters. So you have to give it in millimeters. So the 56.8 millimeters is then the right answer. Can I leave? Or remember, this is the thing you need to now go and ask yourself. Can I leave the answer as 56.8? Is that the most correct answer? I know the book tells you that it's 56.8. And I know you got it on your, uh, you actually should have, yeah, it was 56.8. You, can I leave it like that? Who am I clicking on next? Or if you want to volunteer, you can volunteer. Do you have to put it to two significant figures? That would be better. And the reason for that is because this 15 degrees Celsius was given to you as only two significant figures. Remember, when we're giving our answer, we want to give it to the, le the, the same number of significant figures as the value that you have that has the least number of significant figure figures. Because the rest of it is, uh, oops, 
the rest of it is just not accurate. So what did I just do? Come back, come back, come back. Um, and here she's back. So that's going to be then, what would, I, what would it be? A 57. 57 millimeters. Okay, so always give it to the right number of significant figures. We normally give leeway a little bit. So they in this one, they might have marked three rights, but it also depends. If there was a mark allocated in that question, and you don't, well, every single question is not going to have a mark allocated to it. But when the mark is allocated to it, then you must, um, you're not going to know. So just rather be safe. Okay, next. I only gave you a few. Um, okay, so this one, now they're talking about liquids. So what equation are you now going to use? If they say vehicles have a coolant reservoir to catch radiator fluid that might overflow when the engine is hot. They even tell you liters. And I think I spoke about it in the video. Um, that when they give you liters, it's the same as what? Now I'm going to see who watched. Decimeters cubed. Nice. So one liter is the same as one decimeters cube. So that means they're actually giving me volume. So now we're going to use the volume equation for this. Ma'am, the, que the question you're showing us is different from the one in the book. Oh. <laughs> ours, is ours is about a physicist and a cup of coffee. Oh, that's number 17 in my book. Okay, what's the, do you have this question in your book? Yeah, it's number 15 for us. Did, did anyone do number 16 in your book or did can we do this number 16? Oh, we can do both. Did anyone do this question? Okay, I guess that's a no. Okay, just um, this is an important type of question. They like asking these. That's why I wanted to give it to you. So what you're doing here, I'll just go through the method. And you guys, like I said in the video, there are thousands of questions. He literally took these from that website. So um, they on that website that I gave you, in the, I think the very first lesson, there's a lot of examples. But these are in your book and you can go and try them. I will give you the solutions to them before we have our cycle test i hope you guys saw that you have a cycle test in the cycle test schedule so this one i'm hoping that you guys are going to do well in because it's in the cycle test schedule it's normal time and all of that okay so what you're going to do here the the um, radiator is made of copper and then it is filled with a liquid and they tell you that the coefficient of expansion of the liquid is this so then what you're going to, what you have to do, it's one of those examples I did for you last week as well. You're going to work out the volume of the copper, the new vol, the expansion of the copper. So if you can work out the change in volume of the copper and you can work out the change in volume of the liquid, then you know for the, the difference in these two is basically going to be what's going to spill over. So that is how the radiator works. It's got a little coolant container on the side of it and it, all the extra liquid goes in there. And um, then they say most cars have an operating temperature of greater than 95 degrees Celsius. Um, how would this affect the amount of liquid that, that overflows? So this one was going to from 10 to 95 um, and so if they operate at 95, how would it affect the amount of liquid that overflows? Who wants to try that question? I don't even have wouldn't it. Wouldn't it be not at all because the previous question <laughs> asked for 95 degrees Celsius? Yeah, so this feels like a silly question because at 95 degrees, that is the maximum amount that could overflow. So they would not, after 95 degrees, they would not be more than that. So they would normally be less than this. And that's why they when they build the radiator overflow tank, then they build it so that it can only take, uh, so that it can take a maximum of that. And then you know you're safe. Okay, so are, we are going to ask you some practical question on this. Are, are, are these calculations easy though? Is anyone battling with them? You're literally taking the equation again. You're sticking the values in there and you calculate. It's please, the if you have not done any of these calculations, 
you're going to have to practice some of them and um, you know where I work. <laughs> so please come and ask me if you're getting stuck um, or you, we can do it in break or before school or whenever you want to. If there's anything of these that you are not finding easy, like I think you are, please shout. Otherwise, I'm never going to know. Okay, so the next thing, I, okay, so I'm not going to do more examples. There are thousands in your book. You'll see the whole exercise two in your book. In my book, it's got 34 exercises. Your book might be different now, but there are a lot of exercises. Um, so please go and do one or two more. And if you do get confused, just come and chat. But they're literally the same as what we've done. I try to choose different examples. Okay, so let's move on. Now I want you guys to tell me, where do you, why do you think this is, um, where we, could we use this practically? So they are, this is one of the points in your SAGs. You must be able to name and explain practical examples of thermal expansion. So where in life do you think this is used or used or not used, bad or good? You can, you can say anything. I think I've already mentioned some. <laughs> well, so, in certain things, they only operate at certain temperatures. Like for example, the engine in a Formula One car, when it's below like 50 degrees Celsius is seized, it cannot start. It has to be hot in order to start because the tolerances are so tight and it operates at a high temperature. Okay. So why do you think thermal, so that would, would give you probably, if the question was one out of three marks, it would probably give you one out of three because you've given an example, but you didn't explain how does thermal expansion got anything to do with this. So yes, you are saying that they can only operate at high temperatures, but what does this thermal expansion help? I actually don't know the answer to that. How does thermal expansion help that, do you think? You can calculate what tolerance you build the engine to, to know at what the minimum temperature that it can operate is. Yo, I, I want to think that that's something. I'll, I'm going to actually go look that up because now it's moving parts already. So you're saying they, that the engine must must be heated before it can start moving. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to start a, an engine of a Formula One car if it's not hot. Okay. I'm going to have to look that up. I don't know if it's actually thermal expansion, but I'm going to go and look it up and see if that is actually thermal expansion. It will be interesting to see because I can't see how the thermal expansion is helping there because if you're heating it up already, it would expand. But then how do you get it moving? I, I think it might be some other thermal um, property there, but it's fine. I'll go and look it up. Maybe it is thermal expansion. Um, who can come up or anything else, anything simple that you can literally think of something expanding or contracting and you see it, you can see it in daily life. What about, yes, Megan? What about train tracks? Yes, like, there's, I think there's a picture in your, in your books. So in train, what they, train tracks are also made of metals. And if they, if they don't have gaps in them, they will start buckling. I've got a bunch of pictures on the next page. Yes, yeah, so that's definitely example. There is one in your book as well. Who else can think of something? Come, guys. A thermometer. A plain thermometer, yes. Thermometer is also expanding. Normal thermometers that has mercury rising up in them, those little coil thermometers, there's all kinds of thermometers that use heat. And we spoke about that in the first, first lesson. Yes, good. Normal thermometers. What else? What's, where is it bad? I say like cracks in the road, like because the road expands when it heats and it's hot. Definitely, yeah. definitely cracks in the road because it expands and then it cools fast. And the same as with the pan, some parts are heating faster or cooling faster than other parts. And then it cracks. Definitely that as well. Um, okay, uh, I want a good one, guys. A good one. I've oh, got a good one. Yes, go. Best one you'll ever hear. Yes. A hot air balloon. Definitely. I was hoping someone says that because you've got the air in the balloon and the hotter the air in the balloon gets, the more it expands, but it also becomes less dense. So if the air in the balloon becomes less dense and it expands, then it can float up into the air. Yes, definitely. Okay. So let's look at my pictures. Um, there's all of these guys are applications of thermal expansion. So yes, hot air balloon, definitely nice one. So what they do in um, bridges, so between the concrete slabs, like you can see here, they put these metal be uh, metal things that put that um, 
forks into each other. So they can expand more than the, or they can, they will expand rather, not more than, they will expand and contract rather than the concrete so that the road um, that Anneli spoke about now does not crack or those long bridges that's made out of concrete does not crack. Um, this you won't generally see because you won't be seeing it on a hot day and a cold day. So power lines also sag. That's why these lines are generally very, very high so that they can't reach the floor or actually cause fires and touch um, things. Thermometers we've mentioned, train tracks that's buckling we mentioned. So this is what they're doing now on the train tracks so that this cannot happen. So instead of instead of that, this will happen. Glass cracking we spoke about. This is the um, radiator coolant, like the example that you just had. So the overflow water goes into the um, recovery little container over here. And then when it cools down, it goes back. So it's also... It's, it's not pressurized, it can't be pressurized, so that it can come out, otherwise the radiator will burst. Then, <clears throat> this one we didn't speak about. What is this? Why have I got this picture here? You must have done this in your so life. If they're hot, they'll expand and then the lid won't fit. Um, it will still fit. <laughs> so you're on the right track. What is this person? Okay, so the person is actually opening it. Have you never tried? Have you never done this in your kitchen? You guys open, doesn't, do not open enough <laughs> containers. You must start cooking. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was. Dad. Yes? Um, he always like struggles to open jars and things. Yeah. So he fills up a little bit of hot water in a bowl or something, then puts the jar upside down with the lid so the lid expands. Yes, because now that you've learned um, about coefficient of expansion, so that's a very clever thing that he's doing because the lid is made of a metal. So the coefficient of expansion of the lid is greater than the coefficient of expansion than this container. So that means that, so if you're putting them in the water, the lid expands a little bit more than the container. So then it almost, it's almost loose when you want to turn. So if you're struggling to take a lid off, you can even just pour a little, little bit of water out of your kettle, um, hold it sideways and pour a little bit of water out of the kettle. And sometimes you can even see the bubbles as it's, as it's coming out, as it's um, expanding. And um, you can then take off the lid very easily. So there's a trick that is actually scientific trick for you for the night. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's definitely a good one. Um, there's something else I wanted to say. Oh, and the opposite. So Megan, what you said, they can also use it the opposite way. Because when you, when you do have um, containers in the shops, you don't want all the lids to fall off. So my mom used to make a, a lot of jam. And then what she would do is she would leave all the lids in warm water before she puts it on the containers and then put it on the containers when she stores the jam. So it kind of, I shouldn't use the word suck, but it sucks the lid onto the container because now the, when it cools down, it clings more. And then it makes sure that the, that the lids stay on the container and it seals it better and you can, it lasts for longer. So both ways around it actually works. So please make sure that you can explain a practical example of thermal expansion. That's the next thing we have to do. Then we need to speak a little bit about water because before we go to our next type of calculation. Water is different. Okay, and it's actually not so bad that water is different. So what happens normally, and I spoke about this last week, and we did this and we said, okay, fine. What happens is if I'm heating something up, it's going to expand, it's going to expand, and the length is going to get longer. If this is volume, it will still do the same thing. If this is area, it will still do the same thing. So most materials will give you a nice straight line, and the gradient will be your coefficient of expansion. But what you will see um, when we do the same thing for water, when you're looking at a graph, just a quick graph, and it's not zo zooming into small temperatures, it will still look the same. So at higher temperatures, water will still do the same thing as other, 
as other uh, materials. But then when we get here to low, low, low temperatures, so below four degrees, the density of the water becomes actually lower. So the water expands a little bit. So if you, if you look here, so at four degrees, that is about the maximum density that water can have. That's the closest those particles can be packed. As soon as they get colder, it expands again. And you actually know enough chemistry to tell me why that happens, but we'll, we'll ask, I'll ask now. So the, it, it contracts, contracts, contracts until about four degrees, and then it starts expanding again. Why? Oh, not, yeah. So if you think about the chemistry and the bonding of water, why do you think this happens to water? No one wants to try. Come on, guys, I'm getting making me sad. But see, this is why I don't like online lessons because I speak to myself the whole time. Is it because of the bond? What type of bond? Thank you. Hydrogen bonding. Yes. So what happens is in water is is special exactly because of that. Thank you. So at this at four degrees Celsius, the the hydrogen bonds are not acting that tight or tight. You can't say tight. Are not acting that strongly yet. So what happens is now you know what a water molecule look like. It's it's oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Can you see chemistry is actually physics, guys? <laughs> so what happens here? You the water molecules they can kind of fit into each other nicely. So they will, because they're rolling over each other, they will fit into each other nicely. So they're building a nice puzzle. So they, they can get closer and closer and closer and closer until they become solid. When they become, it's like soldiers. I always think of it like soldiers. If you, if they're just standing in a bunch, lots of people in a, in a bundle, they can take up a small space. But if you say to them, now go and stand like you do in the army. And you're doing this, and they now have to space themselves out properly. They're going to take more space, more up, up more space, and that's what happens here. So the water molecule now goes with its positive side. Now re remember, this is my water molecule. This is my delta positive side, and this is my delta negative side. Now this negative side is now, when it forms a solid, is going to be clinging to the positive side. So these particles, because of the angles in the hydrogen bond, is now going to spread themselves like soldiers. And that means they take up more space than what they would have taken up. Why is um, this super, super important for us? Why is this amazing? Makes you think there must be some higher power that made this true for us. Even if you don't want to believe in any gods, you must think there's something out there that made this happen for us. Um, so how, why do you think this is so special that water does this? Where is it important? Someone must try. I'm going to pick. I don't know, man. Yes. What if humans got too cold and then a vacuum creates inside you because <laughs> the water freezes and becomes smaller? You, that, yo, that would be very weird. Um, you always think of these way out answers. <laughs> but yeah, that would be very bad, uh, definitely. There's a very, there's a, there are much, much, um, that, that doesn't really happen. Where is it used more? Think of it. Ice in drinks. I said, well, yeah, okay, that's a very um, social one. How, it wouldn't be so nice if your ice were, were, was in the bottom of your drink. Yes, that could be one. So just a social thing. But that's exact thing that you're talking about now. In real life, why is that oh, super the important? Ice caps would yes. go to the bottom of the ocean. Yes. Now you're thinking. So if I had the sea... And as the sea starts freezing from, oops, the sea starts free, anything, dams, water, any water. If it, was start, if it would start freezing from the bottom, we would have a problem. So the reason this for us is amazing. Because as soon as the water freezes, it becomes, the volume goes up. So if you have a dam full of water and a bunch of water here becomes cold, too cold to be liquid, 
and it freezes, it immediately rises to the top. So the layer of water at the top will be cold, cold, cold. You can die in it. So it can be minus whatever, 8 degrees Celsius. And no, very little life can withstand temperatures um, smaller than zero degrees Celsius. But a lot of life can... It is an insulated layer. Exactly. So it's insulating the bottom layer and the bottom layer stays at around four degrees. It could be a little bit colder, but it stays at about four degrees. So that means the, the liquid water can never go colder than four degrees. As soon as it goes colder and it freezes, it gets less dense and it rises to the top. Don't you think that's amazing? I, I was like, when I first heard this, I thought oh, this is one of the miracles of life. And it really is. So there's a little diagram for you. So now, yeah, at four degrees Celsius, the fishies can live. <laughs> okay. So if it wasn't for that, then that me that would mean that the it would freeze from the bottom, and so would the little fishy there would be a, a sea harvest on the shelf. Sorry, that was very mean, but yeah, that's what would happen. And this is just a diagram to show then what is happening. Like I was trying to draw for you earlier, very badly. The water molecules are just a mush mash here. If it's if it's cold water, then oh, this is also why warm water actually freeze faster. I don't know if I spoke about this with you before. So if you want to make nice ice cubes and you want your water to freeze faster, it actually works better if you take warm water from the tap and you put it in your ice containers because they can then move nice and fast into these positions, into those soldier positions and spread themselves out. And you can see that it's nicely spread out and they move to the top. So, that is why the Scotsman ice machines, like the company Scotsman, yeah, it, the ice machine itself boils the water first, then freezes it. Because one, you get no bubbles, and two, it goes faster. I didn't know that. I didn't know there were ice machines like that. That's very ingenious, yes. Because my family always laugh at me because I always put... Oh my, my laptop is plugged in, but it's dying. There it goes. Okay, so... Um, yes, so that's that's very clever. So your the ice almost feels like you say there it's there's no bubble, so the ice blocks almost feel more solid, <laughs> more harder ice, and it doesn't melt as easily. I don't know, it's maybe my imagination, but it does really work very well. So, guys, this is an important type of explanation question that you can expect if you look at the the very first AP physics paper that I've I have put the I I keep on saying I have put the papers, but I still haven't actually checked. Um, I think I have put the papers for you onto classroom. Um, the very first paper, this question was actually there. Explain the anomalous behavior of water. And this is basically what you then have to do. Okay, and that's almost the last theory of this chapter. Now we're just going to get to specific heat. So I'm just that will be our last thing for tonight. It's a more it's more calculations. And then there's only one more calculation left for next week, and then we, we're done with heat. Um, do you guys know when your cycle test is? Um, no. When is it? Do you know? Did you say no or yes? I said no. Have you got your cycle test time? Physics. Physics. Uh, further physics, yeah. Oh, I have no idea about further. Mom, it wasn't on the original timetable. Yeah. Are you time. are you sure it's not with history? <coughs> I'm sure she put it with history because none of you oh, take my, history. There's not, there's not even a history on here. Oh no. Ma'am, do you know like which cycle test it's after? No, I I think it was with history, and then if they removed history, they probably moved removed it as well. It's with history in your exam. Okay, yeah, I don't see it now. I'll speak to her and see if there's another one we can use. Otherwise, we're going to have to do it at night again. Oh, I don't really want to do that to you. But we'll make a plan. Okay, we'll make a plan. Um, all right, specific it. What am I showing you in this picture? 
What is, oh, it's a very, very bad picture. It was very much prettier. What's the difference between this spoon over here, the blue spoon, and the red spoon over there? Material. They're made of different materials. So what's going to, what, what's the difference between that? What is a poor conductor of heat and metal is not. Okay, so you learned that somewhere in primary school. Good. Yes, yeah, so wood is a ba bad conductor of heat. So which of these spoons would you use then, um, Jay Brown? The wood one, man. We would use the wood one because your fingers is not going to burn. So I don't actually know now in, on what page in your book this is, but it doesn't really matter. We'll find it when I look for the examples. Um, so we're going to use the wood one. And there's a now we're going to actually work out why then wood is a better spoon because it's a worst con a bad conductor because every material um, takes a different amount of heat energy to be heated up and this is when we what we now talk about specific heat and the the cons we're going to use a constant again and that constant this time is just going to be a capital C so capital C is the specific heat capacity of a substance. And then that would mean that the specific heat capacity for wood is much, much, much higher than the specific heat capacity of something than metal. So what this means is the specific heat capacity is the amount of energy that I have to add to get the temperature of the spoon to go up by one degree Celsius or one Kelvin. Remember, that's the same thing because it's a change in temperature again. So if I want to raise the temperature of the spoon by one degree Celsius, I the specific heat capacity tells me how much energy I must add. But could it only depend on the type of material? What else do you think it's going to depend on? If this was a teaspoon, would it take as long for the teaspoon to heat up as for the metal, big metal spoon? Which one will heat up faster? The teaspoon or the big spoon? Say again? The teaspoon. <laughs> the teaspoon. So it also depends on the size or the mass actually of the of the substance. So the specific heat capacity is not just the amount of energy that I have to add to raise the temperature by one degree Celsius for anything, it is that the amount of um, heat energy that I have to add to change the temperature by one degree if I have one kilogram. Now remember, in physics we don't use grams, in chemistry you use grams. Um, so it's the amount of heat energy that I must add to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So that, you can actually think what the unit is then going to be, because it's going to be the amount of energy. What do we measure energy in? Joules. Joules. So the amount of energy that I need per Kelvin, so that's going to be per Kelvin, but also for every one kilogram. So you're going, so that's going to be the unit for our specific heat capacity. Remember, whenever you see something like this, remember that I can ask you to use base units to derive the unit for the specific heat capacity. So this is actually the prac that I want us to do next week. I'm going to give you a material and I'm gonna say, okay, by determining the specific heat capacity, you must tell me what it is. Okay. So this is the equation we're going to use. This is not the the way it's on your information sheet, and I'm going to show you now what, how it is on your information sheet. So this is the one that you have there What it, oh, that we're going to use. So this is the energy, and you need to remember that it's the amount of energy that I am adding, the amount of heat energy that is added for this. And we are going to use a Q for this. I'll show you. Oh, let me just, while it's here, let me just put the equation up that's on your information sheet I did put it here so you can see we're going to use a Q for that but a lot of books use an E so don't worry if you see an E, E is still energy M is mass times C is your specific heat capacity and then theta is going to theta is also used often instead of delta T 
But on your information sheet, you're going to get delta T. Just remember that some books, some examples are going to use a theta for the change in temperature. And you can see they got the same unit as what we did. And the change in temperature, also very important to remember, it doesn't matter if it's degrees Celsius because it's a change. So please don't start converting into Kelvin because you're going to make, if you make a small mistake here, the rest of your question is all going to be wrong. Okay, so this is now what we're going to do. So we're going to do some calculations on the example, just an uh, example on this. And then we need to just look at phase. So this is O. Actually, we need to add something here. And I want to add it in the SAGs as well. It's not there at the moment. I'm going to send a note. So this, would this still work if I was changing this in from a liquid into a gas? Can I still use this equation? I think I'm kind of giving you the answer by the way I'm asking it. <laughs> well, yes. It's uh, still a substance. It's Just still a, a different state doesn't mean it's a different substance. Yeah, but remember what we said, uh, not last week, the week before. What happens to some of this energy when the substance starts to change phase? It is lost to overcome the change in phase yes it's lost to come the change in phase so it's used to break those intermolecular forces remember so the heat energy that i'm adding then is not actually going to change the temperature so this is going to be at a in a constant phase it can't be a phase change it has to be, so you will see the specific heat capacity for water is different to the specific heat capacity of steam so please remember that specific heat capacity it does not go with a phase change because the temperature change would be affected by a phase change because remember we're going to go up, 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 and then it stays constant. Up, 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 and then it stays constant. So this will be solid. As soon as it starts to melt, the temperature stays the same because I'm still adding, I'm still adding energy. So the, this is the energy that I'm adding. I'm still adding energy. But this, for this part, the, there's no change in temperature because all the energy that I'm putting in is used to break those molecules apart. Only when all the molecules have been broken apart, then the temperature will go up, 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 up again, and then it will stay the same until all the molecules are broken apart again from the liquid phase into the gas phase. So please, this is only for one phase to raise one kilogram of material by one degree Celsius. Okay, now for the examples. Oh, there's a whole book, um, a whole book, a whole table in your book. In my book, it's on page 63. So let's check in your books. The table should then hopefully be on page 65 for you. Just look on page 65 if it's there. there guys yeah 65 is there a table that says substance specific heat capacity yeah okay yeah. okay so you're gonna need this for example 15 is example 15 on page 66 I yeah. guess it is. is there an example that says example 15 yes okay great Okay, so we're just going to do the first one of example 15 together, and then I want you to go and do the other two, and the same as last week, and then I'll, I'll post the answers for you for, um, for two and three. Now, oh, you need to tell me if your example is the same. Mine says 4,190 joules of, in, of, of heat are added um, to 0 0.500 kilograms of water. Does yours start like that? Yes, it does. Okay. All right, so remember in the exam, all these questions are going to be mixed up. You're not going to know, am I now using expansion? Am I using specific heat capacity? The next thing we're going to do is latent heat. Is the phase changing? Is the phase not changing? You, that's the first thing. You, when you read the question, you need to decide what is happening and which equation must I use. 
So for this one, they're telling you that heat is added. So you know that the heat is added, and we just said we're going to give a Q to the heat that we're adding, is then 4190 joules. Okay, so I'm going to do number one with you. Please think with me so that you will be able to do number two and three. Then they say um, 0 0.5 kilograms of water. So they're giving us the mass of the water is 0 0.5. Can I work in kilograms though? <coughs> I want a yes or a no, please, from everyone. Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes. <coughs> I didn't even check if they were typing. Yes, sorry, I'm, this coughing is starting again. So the mass is that. We do use kilograms because I just told you that we use kilograms in physics, grams in chemistry. Okay, and they want to know what is the temperature of the water after it has been heated. So they don't give us the change in temperature, but you know that the change in temperature is always going to be T final minus T initial. Okay, and they, so this is the one they want from, from us. You know that the T final is what they're asking us, but you know that the initial temperature was given to you as, <coughs> sorry guys, 12.0 degrees Celsius. Okay, I'm not going to put that in there. It's just 12.0. Now, let's see if we can do this. They say, so now, equation first. If you look at these values, you should be led to the right equation. Today, we know which one because it's what we did today. So you're going to immediately say that we are going to use Q equals MC delta T. Because they're talking about water, the phase is not changing, everything is staying the same. And now can we we can just plug and play. You guys must get your calculators ready. So 0 0.500 and C, where will I find C? So please go, can someone go and look at the table for me and tell me what C is? Come guys, I don't want to look. Is it 4,186? I'm just going to believe you. 4,186. Did everyone else find that on the table? Is there no power of 10? Please be careful. If there is a power of 10, you're going to probably get some powers of 10 in... Um, in this but this is fine they didn't have any power of 10 there so that's your specific heat capacity of water and then we need the change in temperature so we've got final temperature minus initial temperature and this is going to give us or well, this was given to us as 4190 okay let's see what you guys get Calculators quickly, please. <coughs> yeah, you must also see that it makes logical sense, your change in temperature. So you can't end up with a negative answer. Okay, let's see who typed the fastest. Don't have to talk if you can type. Give me an answer, please. <coughs> Sorry about the coughs. I got the same as Megan. Did anyone else get something different? Is it only Megan that got an answer? Why aren't the rest of you typing? Did anyone get, if you got a different answer? <laughs> okay, Ayton's very specific, yeah? Oh, let's ask Ayton. <laughs> Are you allowed to give your answer like that? Oh, ma'am, I just copied basic words <laughs> on my calculator. <laughs> That's perfect. But, um, sorry, um, the, that is the answer. But now we need to decide 
how many significant figures are we going to leave in our answer? So you're both right. That is the answer. But now we have to decide. So yes, it's going to be for that whole big answer that Ayrton typed there for us. But what are we going to use? If you look at the values that were given to you, how many significant figures did they use? Four. Um, do they all have four? It's a three because of the 12 commas here. Yes. So this one has four. Um, actually, only that one has four. And you see, only that one has four. If you look at this one, there's only three significant figures. If you look at this one, there's only three significant figures. And if you look at this one, there's only three significant figures. So we're going to have to round our answer off. Although there are some with four, so they probably mark three or four right, but rather always stick to the least significant figures. So the most correct answer would definitely be 14.0 degrees Celsius for that answer. Okay, do you guys think you'll be comfortable to do question? And I, did you plan to do this lesson until half past or till seven? Half past. Okay. Um, so, but then that means we, I'm going to have you, we can, it's fine for me that you, that we're just doing an hour, but then you're going to please have to stick with a little bit of a, I'm, I'm not never, I hate homework, so I'm never going to give you a lot to do. So please just do number two and three. And then I'm just going to give you one from the, from the final, from the final, um, the back of the book. Actually, I'm not, because I want us to combine it with, um, with uh, latent heat next week. All right, so just number two and three, see if you can get those two right. 